How's it going everyone? CJ from On The Grow here and today I'm going to be giving a quick overview about how we have built one of these custom built NFT channels that we made. So this is all using uh, components and items that are readily available uh, online and from local hydroponic shops. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go step by step and I'm going to be giving a good idea. I'm not going to be going into like incredible detail because this is something that I'm encouraging people to customize and make their own and actually create improvements on. Like I would really like for people to put their own twist on this and actually improve this design because this is a very rough first prototype for how the system works. Um, so I want there to be room for improvement. So what we've done is I've filmed each section such as cutting the EMT pipe, uh, gluing and cleaning up the channels, running the plumbing, uh, creating the drainage, and all of it I did very quick. I'd kind of show you, hey, here's how we do it and here's some of the measurements. And I, I will provide some of the measurements. Uh, but again, this is something that I'm encouraging people to kind of custom build for their own space. This was designed to fit into our space. And I believe if you're gonna be doing this in different types of spaces, there's different ways that this can be built to be more efficient and optimized for that space. Okay, so I wanted to go over how to cut the EMT pipe and how to build the actual frame for this. Uh, so first let's talk about cutting and what you need. Uh, so first obviously what you're going to need is the actual pipe itself. I use three quarter inch EMT pipe because that's what uh, works with the connectors that I've been using. Um, this is commonly found at like Lowe's, Home Depot, any kind of large uh, hardware store, even some smart, small hardware stores have them as well. Uh, the other things you'll need, uh, I prefer to use this. It's called a uh, scoring tool. Um, you need a measuring tape. I found that I needed a clamp and I'll show you how to use this guy in just a minute. Uh, a Sharpie to, met, to mark out your measurements. And uh, I use my toolbox. It actually has this very convenient little dip right here that helps me to uh, secure this as I'm cutting it. Um, I was before just kind of holding this by hand and cutting around it, which is totally doable. But if you have something like this or a tabletop or worktop or something, it just makes this a lot easier. Uh, the last thing I suggest is putting down a piece of cardboard uh, where you are cutting because whenever these pipes fall and hit the ground, it can be actually quite loud. Uh, so I've just noticed that putting down a piece of cardboard muffles that uh, tremendously. Okay, so what you'll need is you'll need 14 24 inch pieces. You'll need four 78 inch pieces, four 61 inch pieces, and four 5.5 inch pieces. Let's do a 24 inch piece just to make this easier. Um, but the process basically works the same. So what I've found works really well for me. So first thing we wanna do, so we want to take our measuring tape, we're going to go from the tip, and we're going to find our 24 inch mark, which is going to be right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Sharpie. I'm just going to do a little dot right here so I know that's where my 24 inch is. And then what I like to do, what I found works really well, is if I grab this clamp and I actually kind of clamp this down so you'll notice whenever I clamp this the back is actually aimed up a little bit so it's actually uh, a lot tighter than it needs to be and the reason is is that whenever I go to cut all I'll do is I'll take my foot and push this down and now this thing is just not going anywhere at all so then I take my EMT cutter and you're gonna line that little disc right here up with the sharpie mark and then I'm gonna begin tightening this and now it is tight, so I'm just gonna kind of check so I can see that my line's going right through that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start rotating this now. So we're gonna do one rotation, two, and then as soon as it, you'll notice it starts to get really easy to move. You just tighten it up a touch again, rotate, rotate, it gets easy to move again. And what you're doing is we're just kind of working our way towards the center of this metal. And this is, uh, I'll send the, I provide the link for this one specifically because this is the fastest cutting one that I found and it's super easy. So you can see how clean this is. So you need, do need to be careful. There are some burrs occasionally, um, but compared to uh, traditional like uh, angle grinders and stuff, there's a lot less uh, mess and it's very, very clean and very straight as well. All right, so that's essentially it. We just got to do a bunch more pieces like that and then we will continue this uh, with, the, with the next steps. All right, so now we are on to the gluing of the channels part of this build. So let's quickly talk about a few things that you'll need. Uh, so first thing I strongly recommend is gloves. Um, what else you'll need is some paper towels. 
for whenever you do get uh, a little bit of spillage on the glue. This is uh, makes it a lot easier to have that handy. Uh, you will need some actual uh, PVC glue. Uh, we're using this uh, brand because it is single step. We don't have to put the um, uh, primer on and all that. And this is also clear, which is another reason that we went with this one. We don't want like those big blue uh, seals all over this thing. That would just make it look really, really dirty. And then the last kind of tool you'll need is, I like to use this deburring tool. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but basically what this thing does, and I'll show you a demonstration here in a second, is help just clean up the edges of this PVC, PVC channel. The last thing you kind of need for uh, just kind of helping yourself keep this clean is some cardboard. We have cardboard underneath each side for when the glue accidentally drips, if it does do that. And I also keep one inside the channel. I guess the last thing that you really need is a channel, so, and the end caps. So you need a, a closed end cap and then an open end cap. So this is gonna be your drain side, and this is gonna be where you put the water into the channel on this side. So what you do is you take this deburring tool, and then if you just kind of slide it, if you watch over here, like from this angle, you can kind of see how it just cleans up this edge really well. But this just helps whenever you go to actually glue it clean off a lot of that. Um, basically, it would just create pockets whenever you try to go to glue because it's just not very straight, it's not consistent, and this helps clean up those edges. So I'm gonna do this to both sides real quick and then I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I just finished deburring both of the sides, kind of cleaning up those cuts. I'm gonna take my piece of cardboard and I'm gonna go ahead and put it into position because I'm gonna start gluing with this side. Uh, let's start with uh, this piece right here that does not have the uh, drain hole through it. So we're gonna take our glue, you wanna follow the instructions, which is basically to shake this up. Okay, that should be pretty good. All right, perfect. And we got a good consistent, uh, good consistency in here. They say if it starts to look like jelly, then don't use it, and this is still very liquidy. So I'm gonna go ahead and start slapping some glue on this. So I'm just gonna very uh, generously apply a lot of glue to the edge here. So I'm just gonna be going across the edge, I'm kinda of going up the sides. And really the idea here is just kind of go pretty heavy with it. What I do is I kind of like scoop it so that you can leave like little puddles right here on the top and the bottom and same on the sides. So I'm kind of leaving big globs like that on purpose. So now I take the channel. I found the easiest way to do this is kind of start at the bottom and then it slides into place. So now that we've got it on, what I'm going to do is you take it and you kind of hold it here for about 30 seconds. Okay. So I've kind of held that in place for to allow it to set for a few seconds. And now what I'm gonna do is go back and just, again, generously apply glue. And again, this is why I have this piece of cardboard here is to keep it from dripping onto uh, the channel itself. I'm gonna just kind of clean off one side and then just really get these gaps as best I can. And notice if you kind of roll it into that bottom gap there, that really seems to help as well. Okay, so I just slapped a ton of glue on there. We're gonna let this dry. And uh, while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. And that's essentially it for this process. You just repeat this for as many pieces as you have. All right, so now we are on to the fun part, which is actually putting this whole thing together. So let's quickly talk about what you need. I've got all my pipes laid out in the space that I'm gonna be doing it. And let's talk about the actual tools that you'll need to get started. So the first thing we're gonna be doing essentially is squaring this off and putting all these connectors on. So to do that, uh, I've got a screwdriver. You can use a hand one. I just prefer this one, um, the, the electric one, just cause it makes it a lot faster for actually tightening up the pieces. Uh, I've got a square, I've got a measuring tape, I've got a level. It also works as a ruler as well. Uh, you'll need a lighter for the uh, connections for these guys because this is what we're going to start with. So essentially what we're going to start doing is squaring this entire thing off. You can see at the top how we've got this 90 degree connection here. We're going to be doing this uh, for the other one. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to start squaring the top and the bottom for this uh, unit. Uh, and you can see on the bottom as well we have this the same 90 uh, degree connectors there as well. So this is a little tricky to do with one person. I would recommend trying to have somebody there to help you out. Um, I did build this one by myself. It's just awkward. You have to like semi-tighten the pieces and then leave them to where they can adjust. Uh, but it is possible. It's just a little awkward. Okay, so something about these connectors is they send these little heat shrink uh, extra pieces because whenever this actually goes to the clamp onto the pipes, 
if it doesn't have this little bit of grip on it, it'll actually slide out or it'll kind of move easier than uh, whenever it has this on this. So I'm just gonna show you how we quickly uh, put this on. So I'm using my 24 inch pieces because I'm gonna begin squaring this out. So on the end of this 28 or 24 inch piece, I'm just gonna slide this guy on there, take my lighter, and if you have a heat gun that works actually really well and is probably a lot safer because the lighter gets really hot by the end of this process, but um, heat gun or probably even a blow dryer would work perfectly fine. Uh, so what then you do is just put your lighter on and then you heat shrink this guy down. And you'll know that it worked whenever it's all snug and tight. And you can just kind of tell by physical appearance that it's kind of shrunk down quite a bit. So we're gonna do that to both sides and then we're gonna repeat this for four more pieces. Actually, we're gonna do it on all the pieces. So just kind of uh, quickly talk about this side. So this side is sitting at about 15 uh, point, I think it's like one to five inches. And this side is one and a half inches below that point. Uh, so the whole idea is that this is about six feet long. So you wanna have about an inch, uh, what is it? One inch drop per four feet for these NFT channels. Uh, so over six feet, that's 1.5 inches. So you just take whatever the height is of your tall side and you subtract 1.5 inches from that so that you do have that uh, slope so that the water can sl uh, slope down uh, to your drainage side. So that's about it for this step. What I'm gonna do now again is I'm gonna start installing uh, the side pieces for the actual channels to go on. All right, so I got a little bit ahead of myself there. What we're gonna be doing next is installing our corner braces uh, just like you see on that one right over there. So we're gonna do that first and then we're gonna move into installing our actual shelf uh, shelves for the channels, which again, they're 10 inches from top to top uh, between each one. So, see you in a minute. So we just finished installing the corner brackets as well as the shelf brackets. Uh, you can see here, this is a different piece. These were the 45s and these are the regular uh, T connectors that they uh, sell from MakerPipe. Um, so we've got all those installed 10 inches apart on both sides uh, from the bottom one uh, up is the best way to do that. And we have begun dry fitting our channels. So we can see that it fits good. So. Uh, something that I do is I actually drop my channel so I'm not sitting on top of this little black piece. I actually space out uh, the pipe just a little bit. Um, like I don't push the connectors all the way in so that I have this little bit of room here to actually uh, have the channel sit on the actual pipe and not on the maker pipe connector. That way it doesn't uh, have like a slight V to it. It is actually flat on that pipe. Um, so now that I've been dry fitting that and everything looks good, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and toss the rest of the channels in here. And then tomorrow we'll actually begin uh, the plumbing and uh, the lights and that's essentially it. And then we'll do fans and then we're basically done. So see you tomorrow. All right. So we have finished assembling the rack. We put the channels on. We kind of dry fitted and everything looks good. We put our level on and we made sure that everything is actually sloping downwards towards the, the drainage side. So we've done everything correctly up to this point. Now what we're going to be doing is actually creating our drainage um, little channels essentially. And then we're going to do our plumbing, throw on lights, and then we are basically done with this entire unit. So uh, first things first, we'll get started with our drainage uh, what you're going to need essentially is uh, six of these elbows, uh, the, they're the uh, one inch elbows, and you're going to need, need 10 of these T sections for the one inch, 
And these are all just the uh, slit fittings. These are, none of these are threaded fittings. And you'll also need, if I can find it, uh, probably two of these five foot sections of the one inch PVC schedule 40. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I guess we can go ahead and start kind of doing this. So uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna take two of your uh, 90 degree elbows and those are gonna go at the very top. All right, so I went ahead and tossed on the rest of these T sections to kind of show how this drainage system is going to work. Um, first of all, I don't glue any of these into place. Uh, that's personal preference so that I can easily disassemble and reassemble this unit if I need to. Um, I've noticed, I mean, we've been running our other system over there for about three weeks now and we've had no issues with any kind of leaking or anything, uh, even though everything is not glued on that unit as well. So. I've got my 90 degree elbow at the top and then tease all the rest of the way down on everything else. Uh, and what we're gonna do now is create the little sections in between. And I like to leave a little bit of space. So first of all, you can kind of see inside of each one, there's a little stopping point where once you insert the PVC, uh, that's as far as it'll go. I only like to go about half or three quarters of the way into this. I don't like, that, like to actually push it all the way in. Uh, because I like a little bit of wiggle room um, for kind of adjusting these things on because it's not a perfect science. So what I like to do is I'm going to get a rough estimate here. I'm going to say probably about halfway up that one and halfway down this one. I can see that I need an eight inch piece uh, to be cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a PVC cutter, a marker. Should have probably had this already. All right, I got my marker and my PVC cutter. So I'm gonna take my ruler, measuring tape. I'm gonna mark out eight inches. And there's a lot of different ways you can cut PVC. Uh, this is just one that we've done a lot in the past and it works really well. It's a ratcheting style. So I'm just gonna try to get this perfectly lined up here. And now we're just going to squeeze. Bam. And as easy as that, this is now cut. And I can kind of dry fit it, see that this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fit this guy in there. Fit that one in there. Now you can see right here, if you come to this side a little bit, you can see underneath that there's still a little bit of a gap here. That's because this hasn't been pushed all the way down. So I'm just gonna apply just a little bit more pressure and make sure that we're actually seating these down all the way and that we're not actually lifting these up with the PVC. And everything seems to look pretty good here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue this process uh, for the rest of the way down. All right, so picking up where we left off, we had to wait a few days for our reservoir down here to uh, show up. So now that that has showed up, we can actually finish off this plumbing. So we left off right here and we just created all these connections for all the drain uh, PVC parts for the actual channels themselves. And we're gonna go ahead and complete that now that we have our reservoir. So I have gone ahead and created these little uh, connections that are gonna go down at the bottom. What it is, is it's a 90 into a, I think it's about a four inch piece into another 90 down into another four inch piece. And what this is gonna serve to do is whenever I plug this into the bottom of these PVCs, this is gonna act as my drain on this side straight into the uh, reservoir itself. So what we gotta do right now is we're just gonna create a little connection in between this piece and this piece. So we just need maybe like a two inch piece of PVC. All right, so we're gonna mark out our two inch mark. I'm gonna grab our trusty PVC cutter. And since this was a four inch piece, this is actually gonna make both of my cuts for me just by cutting this one two inch piece. So I'm just gonna get this cut. Bam, now we got our connectors. So let's go ahead and get these inserted here. And just to make this easier, I'm gonna take out the down nozzle after these little connectors, just to make this just a little bit easier to get in. So I'm gonna slide in my PVC piece, kind of wiggle it and twist. I'm gonna take my other part. 
just gonna kind of work it in there. Ah, so it just takes a little bit more effort than you think. All right, so there's one. Now let's go ahead and get the second one in. So right here, you could have had the option to uh, tee these together and then have a single downspout, but I just prefer these just because it's a little bit more uh, easy to move out of the way and stuff whenever I need to kind of do maintenance on that reservoir. So that's basically it for the, uh, the drainage aspect of this. And then if you want, uh, you put in these little downspouts right here, you just kind of connect them in. Uh, I'm probably gonna cut these a little bit shorter, probably down to, or I might just leave them. I'm gonna leave them long. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and I'm gonna get the pump put in. So give me one second, I'll get that together and I'll see you here in just a moment. All right, so now let's talk about the pump. So for my system, I'm gonna be using the uh, Simple Deluxe. It's the uh, 1,056 gallon per hour pump. And it's worked really well for everything I've ever used it for. Uh, this has a ton of channels on it. It's not a ton, it's got 12 channels on it. So uh, it's gonna require a pretty good pump to be able to get this number one up as high as it needs to go and also keep pressure for all the lines since there's gonna be uh, 24 feeder lines into these um, into this system. So this is what the pump looks like out of the box. And I have gone ahead and modified uh, the pump that I'm gonna be using a little bit and I'll explain how I did that. So originally it comes with this uh, filter, filter system right here, which if I can remember how to get it off. Doop, 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 doop. There we go. So what it does originally is it just pulls uh, water through this entire actual filter. And what I've noticed in the past, whenever I try to run the pump like this is that uh, whenever the water level drops down a little bit right here, it starts sucking in the air and it starts to lose pressure. So I've kind of turned mine into a bottom pooling one. So what I did is I pulled off this filter and then I took out this, this little piece right here by untwisting it. And then I simply screwed in a little three quarter inch piece, uh, that I s slipped a three quarter inch clear vinyl tubing around. And then I actually took the, uh, the original filter and I chopped it up and then I zip tied it around the end so that I have a little bit of, fi little bit of filtration um, around the end of this. And what that's gonna do is now this is gonna pull water only from that space instead of from around the entire actual pump uh, so that whenever the reservoir gets a little bit lower uh, I don't have to worry about it pulling air so much. So, and the only other thing that I've done to this is that I added on another um, connector up at the top just so that I could feed my three quarter inch um, plumbing line into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put, put into the reservoir. All right, so I've got my pump now placed inside of the reservoir. I can kind of pull it out just a little bit here and show you. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking this uh, plumbing connection that I've made and I'm gonna be sticking it directly on top of this, but I was gonna quickly talk about this first. So I use a three quarter inch hydro farm. It's like a very standard hydroponic tubing uh, that can be found online as well as in hydroponic stores. And what I did is I created about a three and a quarter inch piece to raise up out of the uh, reservoir itself. And then I've got a 13 and a half inch piece to run over to the side on the inside of the conduit and then I have a 69 and a half inch piece of it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in here and then I'm gonna run the, again, I'm gonna run that vinyl tubing up along the back. I'm gonna run it along this electrical conduit all the way up to that side and then I'll see you over there and we'll begin actually plumbing this thing out. Okay, so we just finished running our uh, three quarter inch black vinyl tubing, as you can see, up along this side and now it is ready for me to start running uh, the actual feeder lines off of the main line. So I've created this uh, first bottom piece and we've got quite a few different pieces going into this. So I'm gonna explain each one uh, starting from our connection uh, right here. So the first thing we're gonna do uh, once we come off of our main plumbing line is we need to create a T. So what I have done is I have used a three quarter inch um, connector and I have teed it off right here and then we actually take that into a 90 degree elbow uh, right here with a short little vinyl connector as well because what we're gonna do is continue running this plumbing up along this side so we need to make sure that we continue this upwards. And then what we're also gonna do is run our, another three quarter inch tubing line 
uh, the length of this piece right here so that we can run our feeder lines. And then we're gonna cap it off with a three quarter inch stopper that has just been inserted into the end. Now, as for the lines themselves, we are using uh, four of these, they're the called one quarter or quarter inch barbed connectors. And so we're using that little connector right there to go into a quarter inch uh, line that has been pre-measured out. I think this is probably about 12 inches. And then we're gonna use that to actually feed it into the channel itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting this and I'll show you how I do this. So this channel's a little bit in your way here, but I'm gonna take this connector right here, so our, our T connector, and I'm just gonna push this into our line right here. Make sure this is all the way seated. And now what I'm gonna do is, um, number one, I'm gonna zip tie this up against the frame so that I know this isn't gonna move. And then I'm gonna zip tie this line actually underneath here to this. And then I will see you in just a second. Okay, so you can see now that we've got this line installed. Now we got it zip tied up against this so it's nice and snug. And all we're gonna be doing now is just repeating this process the rest of the way up this. The only other piece that I'm going to add into this is what's called a shutoff valve. And I'm just gonna do this in between each set of four. So I'll put one right here and then one right here. And the reason I wanna do that is, is so that I can shut off water to uh, groups of four if I want to. And that's literally the only other thing that I'm really gonna be doing to this. So again, we're just gonna continue this process. We're gonna run it up, we're gonna tee it off, uh, end cap it, run the feeder lines, run it up, tee it off, end cap, and so on and so forth, all the way up. So I'll see you in just a moment once that is all done. All right, so as you can see, I have finished running all of the lines individually across each one of these, uh, the bottom of these channels. And now I was just gonna quickly show how we do this. So again, this is a quarter inch line. And what I did is I pre-drilled a hole at a 45 degree angle with a, it's a 1564 drill bit. And then all you do is you take your quarter inch feeder line and you just kind of wiggle it through that little hole. I like to put it about two inches through. And then that is not going anywhere. So that's, it for the actual plumbing line. Uh, you can see that I do have these shutoffs like I was talking about in between uh, the shelves. So those are installed where I wanted them and that was the only thing that was different from what I showed you guys earlier. So now that this is done, we're gonna get on to the actual lighting. All right, so now for the actual lighting. We used 12 of these six foot lights. Uh, I didn't wanna run two foot lights along it. Uh, you know, I, that would take a whole bunch of them and I would have to figure out how to actually get the framing for that. So what I did is I just selected the six foot lights and I'm using one of these per channel and that has worked great so far. So as for attaching these, it's quite easy. Um, I cheated and I used it a 3D printed, I designed and modeled my own little 3D printed connector right there and used the uh, supplied silver little bracket. But honestly, what I've done in the past for a lot of our lights is just using a very, very simple zip tie. You just take it, throw it over the EMT, uh, and then wrap it around the actual light itself, and then zip tie that in. But I just wanted this to look a little bit cleaner, so I used what I had available, which is a 3D printer and some 3D modeling skills, and I was able to 3D print and get that on. So. Once you get those connected, again, zip ties work perfectly. Um, what we're gonna do now is actually do uh, the daisy chaining of all these lights together. So we're gonna go through and put all the connectors. So on this side, we're actually just gonna connect them uh, horizontally. So we're just gonna go one to each side. And then on the other side, we'll actually do uh, vertically. So I'll show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep continue this down. I'm gonna put in the rest of the little connectors like that, and I'll see you in just a second. All right, so now you can see that we have connected all of these lights uh, horizontally. And now we'll go to the other side and we'll do the vertical connections. All right, so now we're on the other side of the unit and what we're gonna be doing is daisy chaining all these lights together on this side. So again, we got them all horizontal on that side. And what we're gonna be doing on this side is creating vertical connections. And we're only gonna do this on one side and I'll explain why in just a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm connecting these into uh, so I got my top shelf and my shelf below it together. 
And then again, the same thing. So my third and fourth shelf, and I'll do my fifth and sixth shelf together as well. And the reason is, is that, once I get this in, it's like the maximum these cords can go. All right, there we go. So the reason is, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put power into my top right light. And what's gonna happen is that power is gonna continue through it's gonna loop around, it's gonna to come to this light next to it, and then the power is then just gonna drop down to the light below it, which is gonna loop around and go to the light next to it. So these are gonna be grouped in groups of four. Uh, so now all I gotta do is get a power cord into, excuse my mess. So now all I gotta do is take my power cord, and I'm gonna hook it into my top right of each section. So it'll be one here, one here, and then one here. And I'll see you just in a second and we'll start doing some cable management. Okay, so I have finished plugging in, uh, like I said, in the top right of each group, uh, I put in the power line and I've switched on the lights for it. What I've also done is I went ahead and plugged in my extension cord and kind of got it generally set up up here. I'm gonna fix it a little bit more so that it's out of the way. Uh, but how I've actually got this ran is all into a single double-sided timer with a triple extension on one side so that I can have all my plugs uh, kind of clean all on the same side. Uh, so now that that's done, all we've got left to do is our fans. This is the fan bracket that I've made. It's very, very simple. It's got a maker pipe connector at the top and the bottom placed onto a 63 inch long piece of EMT uh, that's also connected to a short little three inch piece of EMT that I'm gonna use to actually connect to the top and bottom of this frame. So uh, really what this is doing is it's just kind of scooting this away because these channels do stick out a little bit. Um, it was really hard to get the fans actually onto the EMT here and run the cables without it looking really, really crazy. So what this acts as is just an extension of the frame to bring the frame out a little bit down and back and then you just connect the fans to it, which I've already gone ahead and done. And it's really super simple to connect these fans to it. So originally they come with these rubber pieces on the top as well. And all you have to do is you take out these little rubber, they've got a little Phillips head, you just unscrew it in the front and the back, and it kind of loosens this. And then I just take a zip tie and I feed it through the hole where that was originally screwed in. And then I use that to actually stick this to the uh, EMT itself, which allows it to be a little bit flexible. And uh, it's just honestly super easy to use that way. Uh, the other thing that I went ahead and uh, did on this is that these are uh, USB connectors, as you can see here. And each set comes in, uh, it comes as a pair already hooked up together. And what I do is uh, I take each pair and I connect it to another pair because each pair also has a receiver for a USB, so the, which means these are basically uh, able to be daisy chained together. So what I do is I take the bottom two and I hook it up to the USB connection on the middle two, which hooks up into the USB connection on the top two. And uh, then I, from a single controller, this little controller right here, I could choose high, low, medium, or off, and that will control all six of these fans at the same exact time. And then I just take my leftover uh, USB connector and this goes straight into uh, my actual extension cord up here, which does have a USB connector. So you can see as soon as I plug this in, all six of these fans have now powered on and is working great. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this unplugged. And then all I need to do now is I'm gonna take another two of these maker pipe T's and I'm gonna connect it right here on the on the frame i'm gonna wrap it around and then connect it to this and then bolt this up so i'll see you in just a second once this is bolted bolted up okay so you can see here uh, we've kind of disconnected this channel so that we can show you how this actual connection works uh, for this fan bracket so now we've got it installed uh, to where we've got the maker pipe teeing off the main frame down here which comes over into our new uh kind of a subframe i guess you can call it or side frame for our fan bracket which runs all the way up to the top and then does the exact same connection up at the top and all our fans are good to go and so all i've got to do now is i'm just going to slide this channel back into place if it'll go all right and 
Now all we really have to, left to do at this point is do some tidying with all this. We're going to clean up all this cable management uh, and get all this nice and organized. And then after that, we are good to actually fill up this reservoir and begin using this. So again, I'll show this guy connected so you can see that these fans do all power on at the exact same time because they are all daisy chained into each other. So that is really it for the actual uh, components part of this build and building out the frame, channels, lights, and fans. Now all you have left to do is add some water and nutrients and you are good to grow. Okay, so I got a little bit ahead of myself and thought that we were done on this build, but I forgot two very critical things. The first of which is a timer for the pump itself. Uh, I forgot to hook that one up. So we use this uh, outdoor, it's like an indoor outdoor timer that has 15 minute intervals. And we set ours to water six times a day, starting at 6 a.m. and it goes every three hours. So it's six, nine, 12, three, and then back to six. And then it waters again at uh, 10.30 just to make sure that these do not dry out overnight. So I actually like to hook this up down low uh, since my cord for my pump is down low. Instead of having to run it all the way up to the top, I just feel like that's a little excessive. Um, so I keep my timer down low. The other thing I forgot is that we also uh, use air stones and an air pump. So we use the Active Aqua AAPA15L. Um, I like it because it has uh, four prongs for me to be able to do four air stones at a single time. Uh, for this system, I'm only using two, so you can actually use a, a, probably a little bit smaller of an air pump than this one. Uh, but what I do is I run uh, two decently long lines because what I'll do uh, is I'll put the actual air pump probably right about there and it has little rubber feet so it doesn't make a lot of noise whenever it's on. And then I've got, you can tell I've got one that's a little bit longer than the other. And the reason is I'll run one air stone into it and it'll be about in the middle. And the other air stone will go in underneath the uh, lid and it'll sit more towards the back. And then once this water drains, that actually acts to aerate the front of this reservoir as well. So just kind of show you how that would look. I'll just take my air stones and I would feed them in through my reservoir hole. And then I would actually pop open the lid here and then make sure I got these positioned exactly where I want them. And then I would feed in all the excessive line. And the actual uh, air pump itself, I leave plugged in uh, to just a standard outlet and I leave it running 24 seven because you don't want, ever wanna stop aerating your water. If you do, you have uh, more chance of it becoming stagnant, buildup of algae and stuff like that. So uh, that is, uh, about it for everything I'm pretty sure so uh, I will see you in just a second okay so that is it for this video we had a lot of fun building these units and we were really excited to be sharing this with the community I can't wait to see what kind of improvements the uh, community actually makes I'm hoping that people will be sending us pictures when they build units like this and uh, show us how they have done it better than us because I know that this does have room for improvement so I'm excited to see what you guys come up with that being said, what we have done so far is we have linked everything in our Amazon storefront, which is in the description below. Um, the only things that are not in our Amazon store are the channels, which are from Cop Crop King, uh, these little connectors, which are from MakerPipe. And actually, if you use the uh, promo code on the grow five, you can get 5% off your order for the MakerPipe from their website. And the last thing that we did not link is the EMT pipe itself. Uh, because that is just so available um, at like hardware stores that there's uh, it's just very inefficient to link that and try to have that shipped to you versus you guys just going and buying it locally. So again, we had a lot of fun doing this and we are actually kind of working on a lot more builds. So I'm excited to see what you guys are going to think about some new systems that we're going to be sharing in the near future. Uh, this is what I enjoy. I enjoy building systems. So these are actually going to be probably taken down here within a few weeks, even though we spent quite a bit of time and money building these. Uh, I just love innovating and I like to try to create and I like sharing that with the community on how people can grow in different ways and what is the most efficient and stuff like that. So that all being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we will do our best to answer you. Our Instagram is on the grow farms. Thank you so much and have a great day.